Hello to all. Welcome back to YouTube channel Medicos Factory. So in the previous session, in the medicine, we have discussed the bronchial asthma, various definitions, classifications, types, severity guidelines. And in today's section, we are going to discuss the investigation related to asthma and the treatment plan for asthma. So whatever the treatment plan will be taught here, will be looked at the latest guidelines and with the appropriate content. So you can use this for your exam purpose as well and I am hoping that these sessions are found to be helpful to you all and the clinical medicine is also the part of this session. So if you have any kind of doubt you can ask in the comment section and I request to share the video with your friends. Do subscribe the channel for more content. So let's begin. So what are the investigations needed in the case of asthma? So whenever the patient comes to you, what are the investigations? First of all, the priority will be the chest x-ray, which is the common line of treatment in an asthma patient. Hyperinflated lung during an attack due to air tapping in the lungs. So you will find a hyperinflated lungs like this. Okay. Or you can rule out pneumothorax if there is any kind of collapse of lungs. You can go for a pulmonary function test, this is also ideal. Like a spirometer, we have already discussed in the pulmonary function test. FEV is decreased below 80% and it increases or is equal to 15% in the following administration of a bronchodilator. Because at that time we have seen no, that a salbutamol treatment is taken. For 6 minute walk test, FEV1 decreases after 6 minute walk test. Clear? So you can go for that. Now peak expiratory flow you can do, that is a diurnal variation, that is a 24 hour rhythm cycle. A drop of PEF that is less than 20% during morning, that is you can do 3 days per week for a 2 weeks. So you can even check in uh, that way. You can go for the ABG, arterial blood glass, where you can find HO2, CO2, pH, all level you can go, arterial blood glass. You can check whether it is a type 1 respiratory failure associated with the hypoxia or not, CBC, eosinophil count. And the eosinophil, why? Typically increase in asthma compared to healthy individual regardless of inflammatory phenotype because responsible for airway epithelial damaging basic protein which is a cystinyl leukotriene growth factor in the leukin because eosinophils react to the inflammatory reaction. Eosinophils react to the inflammatory reaction due to which you can go for a Eosinophilic count test. You can also go for the sputum test where a charcoal laden crystals are, that is a bipyramidal crystal that may be present in the sputum. Charcoal laden crystals are hexagonal bipyramidal structure localized in the primary granule of the cytoplasms of eosinophils and basophils. So, this you can take the sample of the stomach patient and even you can check go for the sputum test here you will find like this here. you can check their IgE levels whether it's normal or not so this was all about the common investigation which you can go for the patient now we will discuss the treatment line in a detailed manner so let's begin first is a known pharmacological strategies how you can treat whether it is the starting condition, what are the non-pharmacological treatment in which you can guide a patient. So some examples you will see, if any patient has a history of smoking, then you can first give them this to smoking cessation advice, physical activity, metered dose, inhalation may be used before exercise. If any patient is with the occupational asthma, you can ask them to their work history or adult onset asthma. You can ask them to get less exposed, use mask, you can give such guidance or non steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs, NSIDs including aspirin away from the scam. This we have already seen the NSID and drug induced asthma. Clear? Triad we have seen, steamer triad. Where there was asp aspirin sensitivity and all. Although allergens may contribute to asthma symptoms in sensitized patient, 
allergen avoidance is not recommended as a general strategy for asthma because we never know what kind of allergens are in the environment so you cannot say this because it is quite complex and expensive so there is no valid method for identifying those who are likely to benefit so you can not completely say that if this person is al allergic to certain if any kind of specific allergen is there and which person is getting exposed daily then you can warn them then you can explain them that what is the requirement to avoid but if there is no specific kind of allergen and still the patient has a history of allergy or whether the ig levels remain increased then there is a no solution for it like common triggers for asthma we already seen exercise laughter should not be avoided viral respiratory infections should are difficult to avoid and should be managed okay dust mites was the most common we have seen and the litter of birds advice to clean the house to remove possible dust mite drive now what are the pharmacological strategies now the pharmacological strategies are divided into the various patterns and groups as per the guidelines depending on the severity we will go for a step of treatment so slowly slowly we will increase one by one step starting from the patient's condition so first step is a low dose inhaled corticosteroids ics daily plus occasional when needed inhaled sort of uh, inhaled sort of acting beta 2 adrenal receptors that is saba so ics plus saba first treatment will be that and in that salbutamol terbutalol which can be 250 to 500 mg salbutamol should be 100 to 200 mg you can also try uh, give the dpi that is dry powder inhaler rotocaps or md meter dose inhaler spray without a special dose and low corticosteroids inhaled corticoid that is baclomethason budesonide which we have already seen see here the first step was this what is the second step low dose inhaled corticosteroids daily that is ics daily now what are the examples we have already seen baclomethason should be 200 mcg and budesonide should be 200 mcg or you can give occasional inhaled short acting beta adrenal receptors daily this was when occasionally needed but this was daily so second step was this ics plus saba this both are the factor that should be given daily plus dpi or mdi and leukotriene receptor antagonist what are the examples of that montelukast 10 mg tofilukast 20 mg bd that is twice a day in the and the montelukast generally we prefer in the evening only one and one of the common example of this content that is lutokin and montelukast is l dio 1 m which is a commonly used Yeah. So this is the micrograms, or you can give in this dilute in 600 microgram QID. That is a four times a day plus low dose theophylline. So low dose theophylline plus leukotriene antagonist. So this was the step two. in the first step we were into ics and saba in the second step we have added the uh, lutocrine receptors plus theophylline so this was a step of treatment one and two now next third low to high dose inhaled corticosteroids first we was there was low now we will move from low to high ics plus regular now we will go for the the first was saba now we'll go for laba plus ldra that is lutrogen antagonist and theophylline so this was step 3 there are long acting inhaled beta 2 antagonist laba daily or mdi that is salmeterol 125 250 500 micro gram or formoterol so either you can use salmeterol or formoterol this we have seen only in the classification of the adrenergic agonist during acute symptoms short acting beta 2 adrenal receptors that is salbutamol or terbutalin that should be 250 to 500 micro gram or you can give a low dose inhaled corticosteroid daily this we have already seen triticasone is a new and leukotriene receptor antagonist montelukast in the evening zefilukast in the mgm thyroid etc so this was from the low to high the previous days all were low so this is the step of treatment Now next is theophylline, which is an inexpensive, available in the oral formulation. It is dispensable for alternative to patients who are intolerant to laba, or we can say there is no effect. 
in such you can give theophylline attention to theophylline pharmacokinetics is essential in order to avoid that toxicity so you can either go for the derifylin tablet retard in the 150 bd derifylin retard 150 bd which you can say is the etophylin 115 mg and the theophylin hydrate 35 mg and acebrophylin 100 mg od once a day do remember these drugs okay it will clinically help you more now next step is addition of triotopium plus regular oral steroids is the step 3 this is the part so how add on triotopium is was missed in inhaler for the patient who is below or equal to 12 year you can describe this first is 18 microgram 2 inhalation once orally through rotocox or 5 microgram 2 inhalation once orally by the mda meter dose inhalation 2 18 or 5 daily and if the patient is adult with the rhinitis or allergic conditions then you can go for the ics and slit what is slit we will see subliquial immunotherapy which is also ideally used nowadays is an alternative way to treat allergy without injections and allergists give a patient a small dose of allergen due to under the tongue to boost tolerance to the substance and reduce symptoms so it is known as sublingual remember there is a combination of budesonide and formoterol which is a formoterol is both fast and long acting and also has been shown to be useful as a reliever medication as well as a controller medication in the persistent asthma that is recurrent or we can say a long time asthma you can use the combination of both this drug budesonide plus formoterol or you can use the combination of fluticasone and formoterol which is also superior to fluticasone and salmeterol in time to onset of action clear so these are the two treatment where you can use the combination buta budesonide and formoterol and if you want to increase the duration of action then you can go for fluticasone and formoterol clear next is when adding ige or anti il5 interleukin 5 that is omalizumab which is an anti asthmic monoclonal antibody that is the rt which is made in the laboratories what is the role in that most asthmic patient have elevated ige why because they are sensitive to the specific ige and they are the response to the allergens like rust mite pollen animal dander molds and cockroach due to which breaching of ig molecules on mast cells and basophils by protect protein allergens results in the activation of this cell so when they are exposed to ige so there is a breaching of the ig that is ig level increases and it leads to the activation of the mediators such as histamine and lipid mediators and prostaglandin cysteine uterus which in turn the bronco constriction which is a asthmatic attack so when the ig is increased it releases the histamine and other lipid mediators and it leads to bronco constriction and plasma exudation this is the role of the omalizumab next is the omalizumab is a recombinant human I, ig1 monoclonal antibody that binds ig with high affinity as a developed for the treatment of allergic disease so who are more exposed to the allergy or more prone and to allergic attack dose is subcutaneous to injection that is 150 mg every four week dosing is not dependent on serum ig it is free or total level next is anti alpha interleukin map mepolizumab reslizumab or benrelizumab eosinophils are not normally present in the healthy lung tissues but the accumulation is a well defined feature of the inflammatory response with the eosinophilic acid asthma because it is not present and when there is a increase amount it is a ideal sign that's why in the asthmatic patient we go for the eosinophilic tests IL5 is identified as a promising target to prevent a blunt eosinophil mediated inflammations in patient with asthma or other conditions so if the patient is having high eosinophils and there are chances that in response to that there is a blunt of it and to prevent that we give anti il5 which are mepolizumab reslizumab etc anti il5 mab such as mepolizumab reslizumab benralizumab all can be used against the human il which is not there natural in the patient mepolizumab a monoclonal antibody il5 reduces exacerbations in the patient with severe asthma who have a blood eosinophil count more than 150 micro liter so in the eosinophil attack you can give anti alpha remember that 
What is the dose of mepolizumab in the asthma? That is subcutaneous again, 100 mg every 4 week with the polyangina treatment is subcutaneous 300 mg every 4 weeks. So, if there is any kind of the eosophenolic granulomatosis with the polyangitis, then you can go for the treatment. At that time, you can increase the dose from 100 to 300 microgram, but that should be subcutaneous. Or resilizumab or monoclonal anti IL-5 body. We can give asthma through IV, that is 3 microgram per kg once per week. And Vendalizumab, it is a cytotoxic monopromal antibody directed against the IL-5 receptor alpha and the dose is again subcutaneous, 30 mg every 4 weeks, first dose and then once every 8 weeks. Do remember the dose. So, 2 are sub-Q and 1 is IV and the doses of this is more. Vendalizumab. Next is Dupilumab which inhibits the overactive signaling of interleukin 4 and interleukin 13 which is the two key proteins that contribute to the inflammation associated with the moderate to severe asthma. So, for that you can use dupilumab or you can use this dupixan which is supplied as an injection in a subcutaneous that is sub-Q and the recommended dose is in the adults or adolescents. An initial dose is 400 microgram with the 200 microgram two injections in the week or Initial dose is 600 microgram, 200-300 microgram injection followed by 300 microgram every other the doses are two. For patient with the oral corticosteroids, dependent asthma, start with the initial dose of 600 microgram followed by 300 microgram given in the other week, 6 to 300 every per week. Next is Vendalizumab, which is also human nice IG1 monoclonal antibody. It is an add-on therapy for people with the severe eosinophilic asthma who is under 12 years. That is 300 micrograms of fitness few four weeks for the first dose and then for the eight weeks later on. Next, other treatment options. We have seen non-pharmacological, now pharmacological, now bronchial thermoplasty. We can go. There is a technique of applying heat via device through radio frequency waves to the airway through bronchoscopy which reduces the increased mass of smooth muscle associated with the asthma. So, you can first go is for BT, otherwise you can give for the slit, we have already seen without injection in which under the tongue you can give or you can do the vaccination in the influenza and H1N1, they will be going to be taken and you can avoid GERD, gastrointestinal infection it triggers reduced weight and graded exercise. For the gastrointestinal reflux this is common in the asthma. Symptomatic reflex should be treated for the general health benefit treatment of the GERD is that and avoid taking a spicy food and elevation of head and urine So, you can use to prevent GERD is tap, domperidone and also there is a combination of the rab and rasol. Now, we will see the GINA guidelines for the management of asthma which we have already seen first is ICS, other are the ICS and SABA that we have already seen ICS, SABA then we can introduce the format role then low dose then medium dose and you can add a lama. So, we have seen now, but we have seen theophyllin and also we have included the eutrophils and the cons. So, this was all about the treatment of the asthma. I hope this session is helpful to you. So, we will meet again in the next session. Till then, take care. Have a good day.